Today we're going to see if a noob can tell the difference between a calibrated and an uncalibrated monitor and which one they prefer. By, by they I mean Anna, and I'm also going to be involved. We are also going to take it further than that, because we don't only want to answer whether or not you can tell the difference between a calibrated and an uncalibrated monitor, we also want to know which one's better for what use case and who should care about calibrating a monitor and who shouldn't worry too much about it. But before we get into any of that, let's actually talk about what color calibration is, how you do it and what kind of tools you need for the job. Considering that this is a tech channel, let's start out with the tools that you need to use for color calibration. What you need for this whole process is called a monitor calibrator, and it's this little puck looking thing. The specific one that we're looking at today is called the Data Color Spider X Elite, which under the cover on the one side has a camera or a spectrophotometer, if you want to sound like a real professional. On the other side, it's got an ambient light sensor, and then it's attached to your PC via this USB cord which is a little bit short on this one if your PC is placed under your desk. Now how this whole process works is you download the accompanying software off of Data Color's website. When you fire up the software, it asks you various questions about your monitor, like what kind of backlight it uses. After that, you plug in the little puck, which then takes an ambient light reading. After it takes an ambient light reading, the software gives you either a recommendation on what monitor brightness to use, or it chastises you for having way too much light in your room so that you have to close curtains and things like that. After you set the monitor to the exact recommended brightness, the software will make the monitor flash various colors and brightnesses of stuff, which the spectrophotometer will then use to calibrate the monitor. When this whole process is finished, the software will give you this little report card, which tells you the difference between pre-calibration and post-calibration, and it also shows you how close the monitor currently is to the color standard that the software uses, in terms of like gamma, white point, delta E, primaries, all these kind of monetary keywords. Now all of this may not mean very much to you, but it is actually very important for anybody who does anything color critical on a monitor. So let's say you have two colorists working on color grading a movie and their monitors aren't set to the exact same color settings. If the one person does a bunch of editing and tries to get a certain effect in a scene and they give it over to the other colorist who then looks at it, they may not be on the same page of what that looks like because, well, their monitors aren't displaying the exact same image. I actually have first-hand experience with this. I edit and color grade all of my videos on that LG 27UD88 monitor. And what I've noticed is every time I render the video and watch it on any different display, it looks quite different. And I never really know which one is the correct representation of the video. But if you calibrate all of your monitors, you'll get the same representation of that video on various monitors. So that's, that's quite important. Another place where this is really important is if you're a photographer that likes to print your work. Uh, if you color grade a specific effect on an uncalibrated monitor, you may print the photo and it looks different and it doesn't quite capture that same feeling that you wanted it to. A calibrated monitor will remove all of that guesswork. Now, all of these use cases relate to professionals who color grade. And honestly, if you're a color grader, you know that you need to calibrate your monitor. But what about gaming? Does it actually make a difference for a gamer or for a content consumer to actually color grade their monitor? And that's where the noob test comes in with Anna. Hi. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to test three different scenarios on three different monitors. The first one is going to be looking at photos, watching videos, and then playing games. So we're going to see if Anna can tell a difference between the calibrated and the uncalibrated monitors and which one she prefers, because there may be a very clear difference between the two. But if as a content consumer, she prefers the uncalibrated monitor, then yeah, we know that there isn't much of a point for like a gamer to get a color calibration tool thing. And I'll also do these tests and then we'll conclude. So now we have Anna here and we're going to do a test to see whether or not she can tell the difference between all three of these monitors, calibrated and uncalibrated. So we're going to do four tests um, for each monitor and we're going to see how accurate she is. Cool. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so have a look and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Okay. 
I think this is an uncalibrated monitor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that this is calibrated and the previous one was also calibrated. Now I kind of think they are, have all been uncalibrated. Oh, okay. Like so you think I haven't changed so the setting once? I feel like the settings haven't been changed. Okay, perfect. Well then, close your eyes. But now um, I don't know, because... Okay, okay, let's, let's, do, <laughs> let's do a fourth one, and okay. then you can make up your mind. Okay, so I've made up my mind. First one is cal uncal un uncalibrated, the second two were calibrated, and then the fourth one is uncalibrated. So now we're doing the old crowd favorite, which is a Doom. Cool. Okay, so I actually think this one looks better, but I actually think it's uncalibrated. So I think the first one was calibrated and the second one is uncalibrated, but this one I think looks better. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, crap. This is calibrated again. Okay, and then let's do the last one. I think that this is uncalibrated. Is that a bomb or is that good? What we're going to do is show Anna the results now, and then we can see what she thinks. So, there you go. Not bad. Hey! Well, when it comes to the media consumption, you got them all wrong, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> when it came to the photos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie, with the photos, it was pretty difficult to tell. Especially if you didn't know what to compare it to. Like, when you switched between calibrated and uncalibrated, and I could see you switching, Yeah. it was clear. Yeah, yeah. But when I didn't know which one you were choosing, when it was like a blind test, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, but yeah. But with the gaming, I got it all right. You got them all right, and you made it clear that you preferred the, the uncalibrated, uncalibrated version. One. Yeah, yeah. I think with those results, we can draw some fairly interesting conclusions with a couple of caveats, which we'll get to in a bit. The first one is that the effect of color calibration varies from monitor to monitor. For example, on this Dell monitor behind me, the difference was clear. It was really easy to tell. Whereas with the BenQ monitor, it was almost identical because the BenQ monitor was very close to these recommended settings out of the box. And honestly, it's not only the monitors that have an effect on it, but it's even the color profile that you use. So if you use a very flat gamer profile, there's a very big difference between the calibrated result and the uncalibrated result. Whereas the standard color profile may be closer to what you should be using if you're doing color sensitive work. Now, the second conclusion comes with a bit of a caveat, which we'll get into in a little bit. But in my opinion, there are two types of monitor users. There are content creators and content consumers. If you're a content creator, you should seriously consider investing in a monitor calibrator because it's going to mean that you get more accurate color grading results from your specific monitor and you know that you can trust it. When it comes to something as subjective as content consumption though, I don't think you should worry too much about getting a monitor calibrator. Especially considering the fact that Anna consistently preferred the uncalibrated look to the calibrated look on pretty much all of the monitors. Now let's get to the caveat around that statement because all three of the monitors that I used for this test are IPS panels and they have pretty good color reproduction. Out of the box, they produce a very pleasing image. So I don't know necessarily if this point stands for like a low-end TN panel that has pretty bad colors. So I want to do a follow-up video where I see whether or not color calibration can actually save a pretty nasty looking monitor. So let me know in the comment section below if you want to see that follow-up video. And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Follow me on whatever social media you're interested. And until the next video, bye-bye.